I want to talk to you a little bit about HMOs and raising finance. So firstly, what is a HMO? So a HMO is a house of multiple occupancy. So you've got three or more people living within the same property. Uh, generally, that's by renting rooms separately to three separate tenants. They're all on separate tenancy agreements. Why do you love HMOs so much? Because I know you're a master at them. Because uh, they make a lot of money. So I can't, I can't argue Because rather that. than renting out a house, because here's the thing, the houses we were looking at earlier, you'll rent them out for 500 pounds. You'll be left with maybe 250, 300 pounds a month profit. 300 pounds a month profit? You need a lot of houses to become, financially f to become financially free, excuse me. How many houses will you need to become financially free on 300 pounds each? At least 10. Whereas with a HMO, how much, do you, how much do your, on average, HMOs make you profit each month? My larger ones make about 1,200 a month. Profit? Profit, yeah. Clean profit after profit. everything. So, what's your secret, man? Um, basically, you've got, obviously, you've got to look in the right kind of areas. You've got to know what, you've got to obviously take in these trainings, these kind of things. You've got to know what you're dealing with. Uh, you've got to know the rules and regulations. And once you know that, it's fairly easy. What are, um, the, what are the two big rules and regulations to do with HMOs? Um, regard, regarding safety and things. No, regarding what are the two things that, that, that you need to look for. So one would be Article 4 planning. Oh, of course, yeah. So, um... Regarding, um, yeah, so Article 4 being where you can't set up HMOs in a specific area without having to get planning permission. Um, they generally, certain cities, certain boroughs have set them up, um, you know, t basically tapering off certain areas where you can't just set them up anymore. Mm -hmm. um, in, in areas where Article 4 doesn't exist, um, you can just basically set up these, you can get a general generic house and, and then set what's up the as other HMO. One? What's, the other, what's the other rule to do with HMOs? Um, Licensing, right? Yeah, yeah. So effectively, um, if yeah, so you don't need to license a, a HMO that's got four people or less. If it's got five people, you need to get a HMO license from the council. Yeah. Um, so that that's obviously very important. So if you need a lot, how do you get a license for a HMO? So let's say you want to get a big HMO. How do you get a license? How, how do you go about that? So you just basically, you, you print the stuff off online, you fill it out. It's fairly rudimentary. It is pretty, like, they, they want to know every fine detail, but it's not hard. Um, one, you know, it's just kind of tedious. Once you've got it done, you send it to the council, you send, obviously, a cheque, and um, they might come out and inspect it, but it's, it's fairly easily They'll basically just check that you're not a criminal. Yeah. And, and that the house is fit for purpose. So, yeah. so the bedrooms are a minimum of... So the bedrooms are a minimum, uh, each bedroom is a minimum of 6.52 square metres. Yeah, 70, um, 70 square foot, is that right? Yeah, 70 square foot, yeah. So, so I'm, te I'm testing, check that you took notes on the training, see? Yeah. And, uh, but you, you, you've done remarkably well. Um, so, okay, so the, the rooms have got to be 70 square feet. You need, you need fire doors, smoke alarms, things like that, and then you get a licence. Article 4 means, if there's Article 4 in the area, you cannot turn any property into a HMO unless you have to go through a whole horrible process of planning and they'll, even then they might decline you. We love Article 4. Why do we love it? Well, I know you love Article 4. So if you've basically, if you've got a uh, HMO already set up in an area and Article 4 comes in, you've got grandfather rights, it's called. So your HMO can obviously can still operate in that area. And because no other HMOs can be set up in that area, the price, what, you know, the, basically the capital appreciation of your HMO, the price that like, investors will pay for your HMO if you were to sell it, is up, it goes up massively. So Article 4, if you're, if you're already invested in an area, Article 4 is a big win. So, what, what, so what, what are you saying? Are you basically saying that you look for areas <laughs> that are not Article 4, yeah. but the council have to give 12 months notice before they make an area Article 4. So you find properties that are not Article 4 that are about to become Article 4. You buy a house, you run it as a multi-let, yes. and then when Article 4 comes in, you have the grandfather rights, automatic planning permission. All your competition is killed off. Yes. Your, yep. The value of your house shoots up. Your rents go up because you've got no more competition. Boom, shaka. Yeah, it's, uh, Article 4 um, is a massive win when it comes in. So, um, 22, guys. 22. <laughs> like, you know, 22. And your HMOs are shooting up in value? Yes, yeah. So and he's doing this with none of his own money. What, tell me, how do you do that? How do you legally borrow people's money 
and, and buy properties like is that even legit yeah 100 percent. so you basically you work you, you create a network and you work with people who have money and you discuss with them about sort of deals you've got and then they use their money to invest in the properties because the thing is because you're so smart and you've been on the training and you've invested in yourself you're valuable now so i'd, I'd want to invest with you like he knows all the areas, Article Four, non-Article Four. He's researched because you've been through the academy. Yeah, a hundred percent. So, and, and now because you've been through the academy, you're valuable. So people want to invest with you. Yes. Yeah, so obviously, having gone on the trainings, these kind of things, I've learned specific strategies. I've learned a lot about you know deep into HMO licensing, every, all the specifics. And as Samuel said, I'm seen as a valuable person, and investors want to invest with me. So it's, it's fairly easy to raise the finance I need for these kind of deals. Did anyone see him storm into my office? Yeah. He, yeah, he was sweating. <laughs> Swear. John came to my office uninvited, barged in. Yeah, I mean, you've got to do what you've got to do when you're trying to raise finance. But so don't barge into my office. Hey, Samuel, thanks so much. I've just, hey, just, what? I know, right. I've just, uh, I've just basically found a really good deal, and I just want to come to you. Dude, man, you can't just come to the office, bro. Yeah, I, um, I'm really sorry about that. I just, literally, I saw it. I thought I've just got to get trained straight down here and, you know, just see if I can get it to you. Dude, man. Same. We're in a meeting, bro. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, what, she was what do you want me to do right now? What do you want us to do? Just I, just, I just want to hear. You want to pitch? Yeah, let you, you know, pitch it. You can hear me out. See what you think, and then we can see what we can do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, dude! People come to my office without an appointment. They get sent home. Although I do love his passion. You got. I tried everything, but um, so he barges into. I'm, no, I'm, I'm not letting you off. So he barges into my office. This is all on YouTube, and people said, "Oh, it's fake." It's fake because we were because we were recording when he came in. You know, guess what? I record everything. Like even right now, I'm being this is being recorded. I film everything for my own purposes. So the cameras are on. My PA knocks the door. You've got a visitor. Who? John. I haven't got an appointment. John Raybold. John Raybold. And then I, I think, oh John. Well, this is a good few months ago. I'm thinking, well, John's on the academy. <sighs> he really do, can't be doing this, but I'm I'm curious now. So bring him in. He comes in. He starts pitching a deal to me. That's basically asking for money. Yeah, I mean, you've got to do what you've got to do, so... And it's hard to say no, because he, everything I've taught him is now using against me. <laughs> I, I, I don't remember if I gave you the money in the end. Uh, I, I basically, I decided that the sort of deal I'd found, um, I can find loads of these, and I thought that, to st you know, for this one, I'll just, I sold to Alistair, so I just you basically, did, yeah. You did, you did. Alistair literally paid him, like, if I remember right, ladies on YouTube, he just pulled £3,000 out of cash and just gave it to him. Yeah, um, yeah. That's what happens when you're valuable. Why would he work a day in his life again? Why would you never need a job? Yeah, I mean, it, it's yeah, it's true. It's true. I can make more money doing this. <laughs> <laughs> what do your family think of what you're doing? Because I know your dad was very skeptical. Yeah, so my dad was very skeptical about it. Uh, I joined the academy. Obviously, I got a loan. Joined the academy. Did um, you tell your dad you got a loan? No, <laughs> but um, he obviously found out. He wasn't particularly happy about it, that kind of thing, but um, I told him about it. I wanted to obviously work with my dad, um, so my dad's also interested in you know, financial freedom, getting out of his job. Um, he was very skeptical about it, all that kind of thing, so I got him to a crash course, yeah. um, and then he sort of saw the light with it all, and he's like fully on board with it, and I work a That's lot with genius. him now. I say, if you've got skeptical friends and family, you don't have to worry about working on them. Just send them to me. Because <laughs> I'll, 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 people say, Samuel, you just brainwash people. Yeah, I do, because you, your, your brain needs a good wash. <laughs> you wash your armpits every morning, why not wash your brain from time to time? I'll brainwash the heck out of you. It, it certainly worked with my dad. Like, he was like a changed man with the sort of end of the skepticism of things. It yeah, was, it because was... he's just cleaning out all the muck. The seven lies. You know, all this stuff, you're stupid, you're too young, you're all this stuff. And I'm just like, mm, no, knocking, cleaning the brain out. And your dad had his brain cleaned, and now he did a joint venture with you? Yeah, so I've done joint ventures with my dad as well uh, on a couple of HMOs. So, so your, dad, your dad, who's like, don't do that, John, don't go to the stupid course, now is saying, I want a joint venture with you, John, because you're on the academy and I can see how much value you've got. Like, that's, that's incredible. So talk to us a little bit about 
the management side of HMOs? How do you find the tenants? How do you find the? Uh, how do you, how do you deal with that? So management wise, um, leave it. I generally work with a HMO manager in the area. So whatever area it is, I'll find a HMO manager. D discuss with them about the best places to invest. Discuss with them about what sort of tenants I'll be getting in that kind of area. Um, if you get a really good HMO manager, they might, you know, you get along really well with them. They might come out to do certain viewings with you and say, yes, this will work. Um, then, obviously, once the property is purchased, um, they will help me to do any sort of like minor, minor developments, so in the sense of like putting in fire doors. And from there, I just kind of leave it to them. The, the money just kind of rolls in. How much, how much do you pay a management company? So you, you're, looking, you're looking around about 10%. Uh, it does depend on what kind of tenants you're going for. So if you're going for sort of DSS, they might charge slightly more because they are perhaps slightly harder to work with. But um, DSS being sort of like uh, benefits tenants, tenants on certain sorts of benefits who don't work. How, how do you find the management companies? Um, Google. Like, it's, it's not hard. Like, I'd type in, for instance, HMO managers in uh, Bedford or HMO managers in Doncaster, and they'll, they'll come up and... What I'll do is I'll obviously ring them, talk to them. Um, I'll get a sense of the person, but I'll also go and meet them. And from that, I mean, you can meet a number of HMO managers in a day. You just go to the area, meet a few, and then you get a sense of who's the best one, that kind of thing. And then from there, um, obviously, you choose one. You just work with them. That's awesome. Uh, next is, as well, um, what advice would you give to someone that was thinking about should they invest in a HMO or should they buy a single let? What would you advise? Um, personally, I mean, people have said that, oh, you can't get HMO mortgage uh, if you've not got a single let, um, you know, before, or that kind of thing. You know, if you've not, if you've not ha had a property before, you can't do it. I mean, I did. Like, I was at, I'm, I was at uni, so I somehow managed to do it, obviously yeah, you, working you, with someone I else. I hooked you with my broker. Yeah, of course. But my broker but can get money to anyone with a pulse. It's, it, you know, it's doable. It is doable. I would 100% say go with HMOs because... They are slightly harder work in the sense that, you know, they need fire doors, that kind of thing. But once you've got over that obstacle, you just let the HMO manager deal, deal with it all. Like, you make more money from it. I would 100% right, go with those. Bit of a personal question, but I know that here we're very open. I, we don't hold back. People have come from Australia. So where are you currently buying your HMOs? So um, I've got a HMO, I've got basically, I look in the north, but I'm, I'm from Sheffield, so I don't have any specifically in Sheffield, but I look generally in the north because that's where the better return investments are. Um, I've got one in Burnley and then a few in like North Lincolnshire, so you know, like okay. Scunthorpe, that kind of area. Scunthorpe, um, where was the other place you just said? Burnley. Uh, yeah, I've got one in Burnley. And they're working well? Um, yeah, no, they, they all work really well. What's all your occupancy rate typically like? Um, they're all full at the minute, so it's no not... No empty rooms? No, nothing. It's, it's good. Great. Okay. Uh, maybe one or two questions. Uh, for time, we'll, just, we'll keep it at that, because John's going to be sticking around. Yes, ma'am? Just stand up and we'll get a mic on you. Um, oh, I forgot what was... Oh, you, you know, you said about Article 4, or the council have to give 12 months notice. How would you find out that they're giving 12 months notice? Um, how, how do you find out that they're bringing the Article, article 4 in? Four in yeah. um, it's just on council. It, it, if you're networking with people and you're looking in that specific area, you just, you just kind of find these things out. Hmm. So people no, let will me, be let discussing Let me give you it. the honest answer. I just gave him a spreadsheet. <laughs> Come on. I mean, there are, yeah, there are, yeah. <laughs> I did obviously have a but, spreadsheet. But, but, if you, ri if you ring, um, if you ring a council, like, where are you from? Reading. Reading. If you ring the Reading Council and say to them, is, 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 is this area currently Article 4? They say no. Is there any, inten is there any intention? They'll, they'll tell you. They'll be They've really quite open. They've already got Article 4. Do Have you they? Think, yeah. Do you okay. think it's likely that like, an area just outside there would get yeah. Article 4 as well? Doncaster. Just... Doncaster, they're bringing Article 4 in. Right. There's but one. In Reading? Reading's down south. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know Reading, but you oh, said right. that it already no, is? Reading's already Article 4, but say the neighbouring town, would yeah. it be likely that they could get Article 4? Quite possibly, or? yeah. If, if you, or if you, if you Google it, if you Google the name, the name of the neighbouring town followed by Article 4, yeah. if there's any intention, it will be on the website. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, is, is it, it is fairly easy to yeah. find that. It, okay. is, it is, it is. And are you on the deal finding extravaganza? No. Okay. <laughs> we have a spreadsheet on there where we share okay. around, which is all the upcoming stuff. But yeah, you can just Google it. Okay. Doncaster is where I just bought a house yesterday, which is due to be Article 4 in the next 12 months. So there's a little tip off. Awesome. Thank you. One more. Uh, 
yeah, go right at the very back, yeah. With the grey shirt, oh sorry, a grey shirt, um, yeah. Waving your hands around like a maniac. Um, I just want to ask you, are your HMO student uh, lets or professional lets? And if so, which ones, why do you prefer like one or the other? Um, I've, I don't have any professional lets as such. I've got sort of like uh, blue collar workers. I've got a, a student, uh, student one, and then I have a lot of like sort of DSS or um, uh, unemployed sort of benefit uh, HMOs. Um, generally, I... I, I work with return investments, so even though, as I said, a DSS um, HMO might be more, harder to run, you make a lot more money doing it. So, because obviously there's more, there's, uh, in, in the sense that there's less input in, the houses are cheaper in those areas, that kind of thing. So I, I'll work really with anything what works in the areas I'm looking, and which makes a good return. I would say students, are pro students I would say, are easier than, for instance, DSS. It, it depends what, what well, sort of market you want to yeah, work with. Yeah, and my, my advice is don't try and mix, don't try and mix the two. So just, yeah. just find, you know, ask the HMO management company to say, what, what for, for, in this street, what's the best? And then just stick with it. What would you experience. have thought a year ago if you'd have known that after joining the academy, you'd be financially free, you'd have like 10 houses or however many houses you've got, you'd have gone to Africa and helped dig wells and bring water to people, and run business workshops, have dinner with Robert Kiyosaki, and get to know him personally, and now be on stage in front of over a thousand people. Like, would you have believed it? No, I'd probably laughed at you. Like, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have believed like, that would be possible, if that makes sense. Like, obviously, when I joined the academy, I was, uh, um, I was obviously at university, I was second year university student. I didn't really have any plans about getting into property. There was nothing like that. Um, so the sense of, obviously, the, the how, how much I, I feel I've achieved in such a short space of time, you know, obviously through Samuel's health, through Samuel's training, but um, it's just, it's been mind-blowing, really. You're one of many, many, many. I mean, I brought you four out, you're on the eviction. I can see other academy members around at the back and stuff. Like, how has it helped you on a social, because I know your uni friends were quite negative and very, you know, unsure about your property move? Yeah, so, I mean, on a social level, um, I've, I've obviously I've, I've got a bit of a different mindset to the other people at my uni who study history and politics with me. So I get on with them, you know, that kind of thing, but there was not really a, there's not really a massive connect on this kind of level of what I want to do, you know, business, that kind of thing. So being in the academy put me with people who have a similar mindset, put me with sort of JV partners who I'm now working with. It put me with like a whole new group of friends. Basically, it's, it is like a big family. Everyone has... Uh, the same kind of mindset. We all want to work together, and um, it's just—it's just amazing. It's helped, obviously. It's, it's developed so many friendships for me. It's amazing. That's great. Well, John, I really appreciate you coming out. John's going to be sticking around tonight. Uh, you're awesome, man. Thank you for your support. Let's give him a hand.